Hello everyone, John here, Chief Instructor with FPV Australia. Welcome back. Um, the last video I posted up um, resulted in a lot of questions being fired at me and, um, and it <laughs> sort of probably raised more questions I think than it answered. But uh, So I thought I'd do a bunch of videos. This first one I'm going to do is in relation to night ops. Um, and there'll be a few videos to follow this, uh, just answering all the questions that came out from my last one. But let's talk night ops right now, night operations. Being asked a lot about what exactly is required to do night ops, to do night operations under the REOG. Now that's, that's the first thing I need to point out. You can only fly a drone or an RPA or whatever you want to call it at night in Australia if you operate under the REOC or with some other permission. But generally, it has to be under the REOC. So you need a remote operator certificate, you need a remote pilot's license and, or, or be a chief pilot, whatever it is. And then the chief pilot of that REOC needs to enable the night operations under the REOC. Okay, so let's, let's break it down. One, there's a few things I want to point out. One, there is no requirement or need or, or, or want for a night ops endorsement doesn't exist, okay? No night ops endorsement, it's on and part of the REOC. Where there might be some confusion is, in the, in the manuals it quite clearly states that the chief remote pilot can conduct the training for night ops or somebody authorised by the chief remote pilot. So for example, let's hypothetically say a chief remote pilot says to me, John, I've got three pilots that I need them to be able to fly at night, but I don't have the time and sets up a process whereby he authorises me to do night operations for those individuals. Then I guess someone else other than the chief pilot can do the, in, the, the, the sign off. It's not an endorsement. Let's get that word and put it away. It is not an endorsement. It is just a permission under the REOC. Um, now, if that individual went to another company, let's say they resigned from that REOC and they went and worked for um, some other company, that chief pilot has to redo their entry into that REOC to fly night operations. So the night operations doesn't follow the pilot, if that makes sense. It stays with the REOC. So let's look at the process, break it down. Chief pilot says, right, we want to do night ops on our, on our REOC. Here we go. Uh, Billy, I'm going to allow you to fly at night. Let's go out and I have a syllabus in my manuals. I need to put you through, hey, Billy, Let's go through these steps, sign off, bit of question and answers. Yep, 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 you've answered that one right. I'm happy, I'm happy. Let's do a flight now, put it up. Let's look at the lights. Oh yeah. Let's go through the requirements of what it is to fly at night. Got to have lights on it. Got to have the ground area illuminated. It's got to have uh, returned to home and sat. I've got to do a risk assessment during the day. All that stuff. Sign, 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 sign. Happy days. Chief pilot says, I now authorize you to fly under this REOC at night. And that's the only REOC that individual can fly under unless another REOC also puts him through the same process and, and, and authorises him or her to do that. So there you go. That's it in a nutshell. Every REOC has this. There's a syllabus in your manuals. If you don't have that syllabus, get in touch. It's, it's CASA freely uh, uh, allow you to use it. There is practices and procedures that they've already approved that goes into the manuals. If you don't have them in your manuals, reach out, we'll help you. They're freely available from CASA. It doesn't cost you anything to get night ops put on your REOC. Every REOC holder gets it. Every chief pilot gets the ability to do it. But the key points are, one, it's not an endorsement. There's no extra permissions from CASA required. Two, the chief pilot or someone authorised by the chief pilot uh, must put that individual through the processes and the procedures that are in the manual for the REOC, including that training syllabus. And three, it does not follow the pilot to the next organisation. So if you leave organisation A, it doesn't automatically give you rights to fly under organisation B's REOC's night approvals without the chief pilot going through a similar process. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, I hope that's cleared it all up because there were just questions left, right and centre coming about uh, night operations and when and how and there are um, there are procedures that you must follow it's in the manual of standards it's in the um, uh, not the manual of standards sorry it's in the instrument that CASA has released that what the steps are you know risk assessment by day ground area illumina I won't go into them here 
Um, I'll, I'll, if you want a copy of that, of that instrument, let me know, but I'll put a link in the description here to the actual instrument that allows you to go and just put them in your manuals, put the approved procedures that CASA uh, give you in the template, and Bob's your uncle, that's all there is to it. All right, any more questions on that, feel free, fire them through, I'm happy to answer them. I hope it's cleared it all up though, and, uh, and that's you know, giving you an idea on what you need to do if you want nights. If you're an, a, a, a real holder and you don't have this stuff in your manuals, reach out, I am happy to help you. Anyway, all of our contact details are the norm, it's you know, uh, training at fpvaustralia.com.au, our 1300 number, you can call us on that if you like, and uh, uh, you can find us on our website, fpvaustralia.com.au. Hit the like and the subscribe button, everyone keeps telling me, you don't tell people to subscribe, so there you go, hit the like and subscribe button, more videos to come. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this little uh, explanation of night ops. Enjoy. Thank you.